Well, to talk about this, I'm joined by four members of the European Parliament. We have Andreas Schwab, who is a Christian Democrat MEP from Germany and who also sits on the Consumer Protection Committee there. We have Nigel Farage, who leads the UK Independence MEPs in the European Parliament. Uh, we also have Michael Cashman, who is a member of the Parliament's Friends of Turkey group, formerly also on the Foreign Affairs Committee and speaks for Labour on development issues. And we have Jelko Katsin, who is a Liberal from Slovenia, a former Defence Minister in your country, and also you're in charge of pulling together the Parliament's response on the eventual accession, perhaps, of Serbia to the European Union. Can I ask you, first of all, uh, Michael, whether you agree with the, uh, the warning that the EU could slide into irrelevance if it becomes too inward-looking, a warning from that reflection group that was commissioned to say where the EU is going? Absolutely. I think the, uh, the example, you need to look no further than the, uh, the treaties that we've concocted uh, only to come back and look at them again. Uh, we need treaties in order to make this place work, but I think what we should be doing is an audit of what we've agreed amongst member states, the laws that we've agreed, have, have we implemented them, are they working, do we need to review them, instead of always this introspection which the public do not understand about treaty formula um, and, uh, and pushing referenda all the time. So, yeah, I do agree. But then, is that necessarily um, something to include moving outwards and uh, allowing others to join the European Union? Surely it's time, um, as uh, the French minister recently said, Lelouch, Pierre Lelouch, to get the house in order first. Well, he, he would say that. Uh, wouldn't he? I, I think uh, the French can't give us or any, anybody else any uh, lectures about agreeing uh, and, and then enforcing. But we've got very good records on this, certainly in the United Kingdom. But the, the, the accession process is, a, is something that we began, in some instances, 40 years ago. If we now pull back, uh, our claim to uh, abide by principle and enforce principle is absolutely lost. So the accession process that we started, we now need to conclude, and I agree, thereafter we should think very carefully before we go into further enlargement. But this enlargement process is underway, and if we now abandon it, we lose any legal or moral authority in the world. But, I mean, there is also the, the, the small point of the voters, the citizens, and uh, Andreas Schwab, your country, Germany, is one where there is very strong public worry uh, about uh, the EU continuing to enlarge to include more members notably in the case of Turkey, but not only that. How do you deal with that as a politician? So I think we have to accept that uh, the Council and the Parliament have agreed to start negotiations. We weren't in favour, but we have lost. And we will now check as to whether this process is uh, you honestly done. You meaning the Christian done. Democrats were exactly. not in government Exactly. And I time. believe that Turkey for the time being has not made enough efforts to follow that way that we, we have offered helped. to them. We haven't helped them maybe enough, but on the other side it's also their turn to help us to convince the public in Europe that they are ready and willing to, uh, to cope with the issue in front of us. The Turkish flag is a red one. But if you observe, and we need to observe Turkey from Iran, from Caucasus, from Iraq, from Syria, it's very blue. It's a representative of Europe, Europe's mm -hmm. values. Their economy is doing quite well, so it's a prosperous country. And we simply need to grow, we Europeans, European Union, we need to be much more self-confident. And the main problem that we are confronted with is, uh, with is the fact that our leaders are following public opinion. Leaders need to create and to change the public opinion. Leaders need to lead and to give us a future more ambitious, more prosperous. We simply need to move up. Doesn't that really mean ignore public opinion? I mean, isn't that what's no, really going on here? It's all well and good to talk about leading, but actually if you look at the development of this European project over the last few years, it's all been done by lies and deceit. You know, getting treaties through by changing their name, ignoring referendum results. And on this question that we're debating now, enlargement, I mean, it's not just in Germany. You know, right across the European Union, there are major questions about open borders, immigration with very, very poor countries. I mean, the vast majority of people in Northern Europe would not support an enlargement that would include a country like Turkey. And I, I just think this, this, this gap 
between what the professional career politicians want and what the people want is getting wider and wider and wider, and well, we can't go on like this. United Kingdom in no, but Michael, I mean, Nigel... So, so why not. should we well, take... Well, let's have a referendum on it, shall we? Take, absolutely. And, and, oh, I, oh, I, oh, you support that, would you? Well, why did your government break its promise, though? We didn't... Just let's get for it. We didn't have a referendum debate on in or out. I'd love to... On anything. I'd love to... Michael, we have seen, though, in the in the results of the referendums in France and the Netherlands in 2005, we've seen the result of politicians not listening. There, and, and worries about enlargement were, in fact, manifested in those yeah. results. Well, I, I'm, I'm not... I, I think you can look at any results and, and, and turn them into, into, what, into what you want to reinforce your argument. I believe you go into politics in order to have a view of the future. You shape public opinion. You lead public opinion. Accession process makes enlargement possible. And the enlargement brings European Union into new countries. As, so, as soon as you are a member of European Union, there is no need anymore to emigrate. We don't emigrate anywhere. We emigrate to new member countries because we are, because we are making business there. So as soon as Turkey will become part of European Union, there will be no need anymore to go to the European Union because European Union will be there. No, no, there, will, there will be investment. No, no, but that is no, not no, no, what actually nonsense, has happened. It? When Poland it? joined the EU, a million Poles came to Britain in 18 months. A million. They get, they All of them, they were returned. returned. And over half of state. They returned. And over half of state. And this is what we found in over Spain. Over half of this state. This is what we found no, in Michael. Spain. Joined us. You see, you're burying your head in the sand again. Uh, you're completely Michael. ignoring the stats. Uh, I am, and, and frankly, do you believe in democracy, Michael? Because all this talk about leading opinion, at some point, you have to recognise that people democracy is. don't people want this. Don't okay. vote you back in. But Nigel, let's talk about what people who work in our country from other EU countries contribute to the economy of our country. Never, never what cut about these security? people off. Never cut these people off. What about You're unemployment? Talking about a minority of people. What about unemployment? And you They're should not denigrate. They're They're not, 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 no, no, this is not about denigration. It's about okay. control. Okay, uh, and Andreas, the and then the Turkey. Turkey will be much more. Uh, difficult to handle on this because the poverty is much, uh, much yeah, lower, and the poverty is much higher, and, and so we, much, we are facing a, a bigger trouble there. We speeded okay. it up in terms of, in particular, Bulgaria and Romania. That was a mistake. And, and, Big mistake. And, and yet, Turkey, who's been in line much longer than anybody else, we keep saying, not enough, not enough. Mm. And I, my biggest fear is that Turkey will decide that it wants to end uh, mm. the discussion. Michael mentions the case of Bulgaria and Romania, uh, that it was, it was done too fast. They weren't ready. Well, that's an important point. And in a sense, the EU only has itself to blame, doesn't it, if this public opinion uh, exists against further enlargement because they keep fudging it just like they fudged with the euro and which is why we have the cycles. problem at the moment isn't that true well Bulgaria and Romania together they are smaller than Poland itself so it's not a huge problem these economies are developing and going back to Turkey Turkey is the most developed economy in a region and it will be even more developed when the accession is going to happen we need to be stronger, more successful. That's why we need to enlarge and to improve and our shape. to be a Nigel. economic global player. Well, Andres, this, is, just this, course. this is the talk of empires, isn't it? You know, empires always need to expand. It's a wonderful way to have debates like this of distracting attention from what's really going on. And of course, what's really going on is a failed monetary system. It's probably going to hit the buffers before Christmas. Um, and, 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 and I mean, there is, I mean, as far as I can see, the risk of, of a sovereign default in Greece or Spain before Christmas is it's, it's a better than 50% chance. And again, and, and again, and again, another project, the Euro project, that's been pushed upon people without anybody ever being asked. Had the Germans had a referendum on this, I'm quite certain they would have said no to the well, Euro. Well, is this and the now time? Is this really the time? The past, let's look to the future. So and, 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 and even in the past, well, there was a majority the, in favour of the present, isn't but, it, Michael? But, uh, yeah, it's but, a reality unless, but the unless currency we do, unless we deal with where we want to be, we can't solve the problems of the present. We can only solve the problems of a financial economic crisis, which is sweeping across the globe by doing it collectively. Nigel's answer no. that we cut Northern off and South separate means, means that you become weaker. And that is why I'm so happy to disagree with him on his view of the world and his view of the United Kingdom Euro, in Europe. Okay, Euro Andreas, Andreas. The, Andreas. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. I mean, uh, the, the, it's true that the, the Germans were at the beginning against the euro, but in the end, they were happy with it. What, paying the bills? Uh, no, paying paying the something different now. With the money, <laughs> no, they were not. happy. You think now the Germans are happy with the euro today? <laughs> no, that has changed, and it's, it's true that we have a serious problem. We have to handle better mm -hmm. the euro, so no, no doubt about that. But we have to do that in future. We didn't foresee the Lehman okay. uh, Bank crisis. And it is misleading, isn't it, Nigel, to, to talk about all these countries as if they're all 
basket cases. Estonia has a predicted growth rate for next year of 5%. It's a lot well, better think, than Britain. I think um, if, if we Iceland. Look at, if we look at human rights in Romania, we just turned a blind eye to the way the Roma retreated, uh, the way that organized crime uh, still has a grip over Bulgaria, and we turned a blind eye to it. Look, I, I just think, as far as the Balkans are concerned, you know, we're dealing with countries that in the 1990s fought to break away from political union and have their own independence and now through a political class who themselves will get very rich indeed we're actually encouraging these countries to rejoin a political I union. I think it is a very, you, you saying very dangerous thing in the Very briefly, Michael. It was called Yugoslavia, I'm, Michael. I'm, okay. I'm not doing it well because they Yugoslavia. chose... Okay, let Michael make his point very briefly. But look at Poland. Yugoslavia. Poland had teething, teething troubles with... No, not Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Slovakia, all of them mm -hmm. under Soviet domination, and they took a decision to voluntarily join yeah. countries and others the where, they, of where they had... Michael. Okay, and well, force countries that's together for another day. No one's Don't do it again. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.